Hey YouTube, you see that? It's 90 degrees in my apartment today. It is 90 degrees. Look at me. Does it look like I'm sweating? Does it look like I'm sweating? I am sweating so bad. I am trying to fight. <laughs> I had my oxygen off. I practice with my oxygen all the time. Every day I'm practicing with my oxygen, not having it on. But I needed to put my oxygen back on because, oh. <laughs> Woo! It is a struggle without my AC. I just showed you 90 degrees, right? My oxygen is broke. In this apartment, the oxygen is broke. The washing machine does not, I mean, it's 100 apartments and the wash machines, wash and dryers do not work. So I have fans, fans. All through the house. I have fans all through the house. Oh God, bear with me. I had a story to tell you guys, but I wanted to show you my pain and agony. Oh. That I am going through right now. I'm trying to stay positive and trying to stay um, focus, <laughs> focus, Glenda, focus, focus, focus. Okay, so, so excuse my oxygen tank. I need to breathe um, in this 90 degrees heat wave inside my apartment in the Fame Gardens projects that clearly the managers they're just not going to fix it's been over three years since i've been here and the the air conditioning has never worked the washing machines have always worked on and off the elevators have always worked on and off see you just really never know what the poor people go through people living in the projects leafa people living in beyond, not beyond, they're living below, below their means. You don't know what they're going to until you go through it. As a homeowner, I didn't have to do all this. I fixed my stuff and I had money to do it. We tenants, you don't even have to be poor, but if you live in an apartment, you depend on your managers to do their due diligence, do their job at taking care of their business. And if they don't, they're considered what? slum lords but as i stated before i'm trying to stay positive because i know sooner or later i'm going to be out of here i set my mind and my heart and my my drive is to get out of here so i will get out of here sorry about that But this building, my manager, I had a flood like two weeks ago, my manager, and I had to put all my towels and blankets down. She came and fixed the, she came and actually washed my towels because it was gonna be mildewed. She came and washed my towels, but she knew a way to do something with these machines. I have put money in the machines and I've lost and lost in the waters like the washing machine, when I say broke, literally, when you put stuff in the dryer, in the washing machine, and you open it up and it hasn't spun. So it's just still a pool of water, that type. And then the dryer, you put a dollar fifty in the dryer and the clothes are still not dry. You put another dollar fifty in, so down it's three dollars and it's still not dry. Like that type of 
broke, okay? Spending lots of money on things that are broken that don't fix. And I received a voucher to move on, to move over to port. They consider it as um, port over in order to, uh, you can utilize your vouchers, this is what I'm told, to port to a different city. So I've done my due diligence by going to many different apartment buildings and trying to get out of where I'm at, right? But when I go and I apply for these apartment buildings, guess what? They tell me I'd be on a waiting list. And these waiting lists are like five and 10 years from now. Like, really? So what's the point, I ask you, of having these, these apartments that are tax credit? See, first of all, they own a county too. Or they got a business contract with the county. Because if you get a if you have a if you find a tax credit building, let me slow down. I digress. Let me slow down. When you find you go in your community, wherever you at, I'm right now in Los Angeles, California. But wherever state that you are from, and you know that there is a building and they say tax credit, they're a tax credit building, that means they got money from the government. So aren't they on the county too? They're supposed to have several different apartments available to house people with low income. People that have low income, no income, not much more income, are using utilize their Section 8 voucher. Well, they put us on a waiting list. And my, my goal is to get in there now and why the building is nice and thriving. Many different buildings I went to. And they put my name on the list. Put my name on the list. And this one building in Inglewood that was has a pool and really nice, I go to check back five years later. Ugh. And guess what? All this time, oh, oh, well, you know, we see that you didn't call. Like, what? I didn't came up here two, three different times. And hey, what was the status of my application? They don't want you to move in there. They want to put, and found out that the manager was playing games. This is at the region. I'm gonna put them on blast. It's at the Regent, on Inglewood, on Regent Boulevard, in Inglewood, okay? The manager was putting people up. And in the apartments that I'm feeling, I'm feeling like these apartment buildings in the Playa del Rey, Marina del Rey, all these buildings that I applied for, they putting a letter on our application. That's what I feel. They tell us they put it on a waiting list. Just think of like Donald Trump. Okay, remember that, that lawsuit with Donald Trump when he was putting the C, the C on the application. And what did the C stand for? Colored. So they put this in that pile. So waiting list people, they go in this pile. And the other people are able to get in there. I've seen some people there. I was like, wait a minute. They don't look like me, but I know they don't have that much money. But they got in there. They a different color. You see what I'm saying? So they put us in a pile in the application. They put the application in a whole nother pile with a letter, uh, Section 8 on it, on that list. And if we get called, it'll be many, many years. By the time, maybe that building is run down. So low income and public housings, what I'm learning from being a homeowner, knowing now what poor people have to go through they want to have you strategically placed in an area where they can find you. So we as poor people can fight against each other, not like each other. You know, the crab syndrome. You know, I don't fight. I don't, you know, I stay to myself and think positive. I roll and move silently and positive. I speak to my neighbors, but I go about my business. Yeah, I do. Uh, because I don't think I'm better than them, but I think I'm better than this building. I know that I'm better than this building. Remember, I'm a homeowner. Homeowner mentality. Trying to get out of where I'm at. Comment below if you've had Section 8 voucher and you've been waiting and you're still waiting. Or do you got a way? Or you got a hookup? Because people have hookups. 
I don't have a hook up. I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to stay motivated to keep going. So while I'm waiting to get my big home, my son can be comfortable. My son has been challenged. When I say challenged, what sets you from, you know, like he's a big goofy kid. And yeah, he's six, almost 6'3", six, 240 some pounds. But they challenged him. And this was not this year. This was like last year when he was 15. 14 going 15 and I saw with the guy talking to him the time when and put a gun not a gun on him but sh sh flashed his gun like letting him know like yeah what up homie you know where you at like why do kids have to go through that so I fear for my child and I want to have my be have my child to walk around his community and love his community but he's ch he gets challenged because of the color of his skin, because of what he looks like. And, you know, people take their lives, want to take their lives, because, just because. So I'm trying to get another area, in a better area, better neighborhood, so my son can grow up peacefully, go back and forth to school peacefully, and I can be at ease and my, my mind just at rest and live in a nice building while I'm waiting to buy my home but they're not allowing this. So again, what point is the voucher? It's just something to say that they are trying to help us. But are they really helping us? Are they really helping us by keeping us? Oh yeah, I can probably take my voucher. So, so far I've seen availability back, back east. <laughs> That's still the hood. My son will still have to travel. He's in Culver City. Culver City, LA, California. He would still have to travel to get, to go through the hood to get to his school in a nice area. And I refuse to take him out of where he's at now. He's been there since the first, second grade, almost second grade. As a mother, would you want to take your kid out of a nice area? No, I used to live in that area. Culver City in, in my own home, you know? So, dealing with this heat wave. <laughs> I just thought I wanted to share. I would share of like what I'm, my thought process is of, and what I'm going through. And I'm still staying positive, you guys. I'm just sharing. And if you know it's a better way for us to get up out of here, for me to utilize voucher if you are a private owner of a home that you would like to rent out because rent is automatically paid with the section 8 and you see I'm trying to be a business person I will be a homeowner again I'm just striving right now I'm striving for success trying to get to a better life help me have a better life thank you for listening